Eric's down for me, and we'll head into the show tonight. Welcome, everybody, to the INE, the weekly INE network broadcast. My name is Dr. Lou Jensen, and this is our ninth year of webinars. We've been getting together as creative, artistic people for a long time. And we have a seven-step program from going from an amateur of something to the master of something and then trying to promote each other from there on out. We call that the INE Network. And this gathering now with these new tools, the Internet tools, are really expanding and changing things for all of us. And we're trying to do more to take advantage of that and to help promote each other's names, names and reputations all over the world now. So... Uh, I'm going to light up the show quickly tonight. We've been doing a, a, a series. This is the sixth show in a series of uh, webinars to uh, talk about sales. And we're well into it now. The first three shows were for everyone that wanted to sit in and now these last five shows are for members only and the idea is to try and help each of us maximize our position in our in our businesses everyone has started a studio around their hobby gradually build it in the direction of their own preferences what your interests are is where you should take it and we have a full show tonight it's been a lot of fun to watch this kind of take off and gradually get to a point where we can sell not only the work that we do but also the concept that we've been pioneering as a company for 30, 35 years. Uh, tomorrow is the anniversary of the founding of the company in 1983. September 12, 1983 is when I sat down at the kitchen table and filled out all the paperwork and said, oh good grief, what am I doing? <laughs> And had I had any idea what I was unchaining at that point, I'd probably gone and run and hide. But it's been the most amazing journey. It's something that we've enjoyed doing. All of us that are participating or on the show tonight have been together for a long time. We know each other pretty well, and the idea is to try and improve our efforts as we're going after the marketplace. And one of the concepts I talk about continuously is this uniqueness thing. We just went through a month like no other. This last month of August was only happened once in every 823 years. And so when you realize that there's these kinds of opportunities, these kinds of different occasions, what we're looking for is these little individual whispers that light up our own individual life and help us find some way to basically trade ourselves better in the economy. But if we don't do something about those little whispers as they come along, then the effort is just not even worth it. And so we've talked a lot in our previous shows about intentions and making up occasions to follow up with people and keep them in our lives, to track their individual efforts and to build inquiries, customers, relationships, patrons, and power. Let me go back and see if I didn't go past. Oh, I did right there. I had two show, two slides. I was going to mention, uh, wanted to mention September 11th today in remembrance of all those who were killed in the Trade Towers. And it's so interesting when you bump into that occasion again, you realize how much happened and how many people were impacted. Not many people don't remember the exact moment when that started happening in that individual day 14 years ago. And I wanted to recognize that and move on into the shows tonight to see if I can help us find some more advantages in our own and our own selling kind of efforts. We've been selling kits now for 30 years, over 30 years, and our packages are what has has made it work. It's one thing to buy the high-speed drill or a sandblaster or an airbrush and then try and learn how to use it and then go on into the marketplace. And what we did was put the package together to help people kind of take that on 
and hopefully succeed to a better degree. And as we got better and better at our own selling function, <clears throat> we tried to sharpen, sharpen the saw all the time because we didn't have any trouble creating leads. What we had trouble was this follow through thing. And it took us quite a while to get that in our brains to the point that this is not an impulse and we need to have a relationship in order for somebody to actually go ahead and buy. So in these five series, I'm trying to share our inside trade secrets, basically the things that have helped us, helped us succeed and grow the IE network to the point that it would really be of some impact someday. Profitable Hobbies and IE Network are the same thing. Profitable Hobbies sells the equipment and handholding, and then IE Network is designed to try and help you succeed with it. <clears throat> this series is one I'm going to do from now on every year, just as we head into the selling season. Most of you know that the first weekend in August is the worst selling weekend of the year. Nationwide, the first weekend, first weekend in August, is the worst selling week of the weekend of the year. And it's when the majority of art shows and promotional events happen all across this, this nation. And that's when I got my started was in Park City. I did the Park City Art Show years ago, and it was my first major art event marketing effort. And... Uh, I've told the story many times because it was a real, a real eye opener. I went through, got boiled in oil <laughs> at that show. But when we went into it, uh, we just kept at it until we found a way to kind of succeed. This last week, I taught a class, a studio startup class for Kim and Dino Dev, uh, Devereaux. Not Devel, Devel. I got their name wrong all week long. Kim uh, and Dino are from Nassau, and I hope that they're on tonight with the webinars. They are in a position where they can kind of connect with us from there. And there's very few that have ever come and taken our class. We've had hands-on courses for over 3,000 people here at the company. And for them to make that huge effort to come here and spend that week with me and then try and zero in on what should she do, what most would work well for her, uh, very few people have ever sat down next to me with that high-speed drill and had as good a hands as Kim had. I was so impressed. And that in and of itself means there's no question that she's going to succeed with her skills. But the other part of it is that she needs to make it work. She has a tremendous amount of desire, uh, as much energy as anybody I've been around, and got a super attitude and spirit about her and so when she puts all those together and finds the subject or the concept and we think we opened that door this last week while she was here it was just the most delightful time to zero in on her studio and zero in on her direction now if everything works with the webinars and Google Plus and all we're trying to accomplish here Kim will soon be joining in and she will be participating and the idea is as we promote her she then promotes us and we all we all do better because of that and that's kind of how things have gone from the very beginning what started out as my story quickly became our story and now all we need is for you to get it too okay it's a decision that you make you literally say, I'm probably not very good at selling myself at this point, but I am going to learn it. I'm going to undo this and figure it out and put it to work in my own individual life. The first issue that we studied was self-confidence. The second thing we talked about was our efforts in learning by doing. The third one is we sell hope. What we're selling in the marketplace is one of the most needed products out there. It's just gotten more and more demand in its 30-year history because more and more people are searching for an opportunity. How can I make some extra income and turn that into my own relationship and my business? Uh, the fourth card was the numbers game. And so you literally have to do the process of tracking 
from an inquiry to a customer to a patron to power people that then help you. And as you grow this strength underneath you, it just gets better and it gets better and it gets better. Uh, Tuesday this week, I had lunch with two multimillionaires and president of the university, local university. And that stuff I've been working on and those relationships for at least 35 of these years. And that part most people don't understand, this constant attention to the relationship is what makes it work. And I have invested in everybody in that at that table except this new young president of this university. And it was his first time to go see Jack Solomon's collection and so the day just could not when we sat down afterward Jack and I were talking about it I just just could not have gone better just could not have gone better but that leads me then to the fifth card and what we're going to talk about tonight is follow through if you don't have a plan of action you really do put yourself in a difficult spot because you just kind of do it one way one time and then you're all over the place for anything else that you try to make your effort. And it really does help if you can kind of what we call hone your skills. You begin to learn exactly what to say when that then begins to open up and build the relationship even more. And if you really can figure out what you're trying to accomplish and don't tell yourself you can't do it, Tell yourself you just haven't done it yet. And that one word, yet, means that's still possible. It's still potential. There is a way to make things work. And if you'll stay with it and 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 stay with it, I guarantee you the other half of the business will begin to open up for you. The goal is to try and increase the monthly income for everybody in this program now, the new all-star selling team, the social media team that we're beginning to build, produce a, a degree of income for each of you um, from working from your phone, working from your home, right out of the, off the internet, and make it literally work for those of us who, those of you that want to participate. I can't tell you how strong I think it is when we bother to sell each other's efforts. And when you mix that now with your smartphone and begin to realize what kind of potential there is underneath all of this, I have never seen a time in my business career like now. Uh, we went and got all new phones. Uh, Chris and Tammy have new notes now, and mine is still not quite here. <laughs> I've had two weeks of hell. I guess no matter what, I, I just went in and screamed at the phone company because they looked up and found out somehow my order got canceled. It just died in the process and never got fulfilled. And so I says, I'm the one who did the phone and brought everybody else in the door. But I like the stylus. I like what happens when I've got this little pen. Apple finally broke down and came out with their new tablet with a stylus this yesterday. And the thing that's so much of an advantage with this is it's a very creative little product that allows you to sketch and doodle and capture your thoughts and ideas. But it will also allow you with that little pen to text faster because you don't have to hit it with your great big fingers. And you can also talk to the phone and have that do the texting. And so there's just so many neat things that are going on now with this new tool here it literally is going to replace your computer. They're getting so strong and so capable and there's so much you can do. The larger ones like this, now the reason I like the note is I can compose what I want to put on a website post up on my stream right here. I don't have to go in and do it on the computer and then post it. I can do it right from my phone and I'll promise you in the next three to five years that we won't do it with. This will be your computer. And most of us tend to buy the cheaper, smaller ones, but I'm going to try and talk you into our T-Mobile account is 30 bucks a month for a uh, Note 5. 
plus the charges of the phone. So it ends up about being 70, 80 bucks a month. But it's just almost imperative that you begin to acquire that capacity. Because what we're going to do is we're going to go fishing together on the web. I'm going to teach you how to compose, and then you're going to learn how to publish. And then we're going to grow each of your own supportive relationships. Now, the thing that I wanted you to kind of realize tonight, I don't know if you understand this or not, but everybody's stream every day is your own. No one else's stream is like yours. What pictures are put in front of you in that stream, your thread on uh, Google Plus, is related to your threads of interest. And you're the one that has to groom it. If all you do is go down through it and you don't ever block anybody, then you'll get whatever Google decides you most like and want, and that's what they throw at you. But you can grow. This is like getting a magazine that's going to present to you every morning the thoughts and the ideas and the concept with the people involved that are probably very interested to you. So this like-mindedness of marketing is just huge here. There's just nothing, nothing quite like it. Guy Kawasaki used to be head of marketing, uh, chief evangelist for Apple. And he's here with that billionaire from, I uh, can't remember his name, uh, is also on the thread. But you have to go find Kawasaki and you have to Richard mark Branson. Branson, that's right. You have to mark following and mark these people and pull them into your life. And then do some interacting to a degree. Look at these numbers here. He has 7 million followers and nearly 600 million views. Now those are numbers that are just all but really hard to wrap your head around. And all it's going to do is get stronger. These, are gonna, these kind of numbers are going to look silly eventually. And if we don't get in and participate and figure out how it works, then you just barely hover along. You have to literally realize that if we're going to grow our presence, we have to be the ones to grow it. You can't just expect it to happen. <coughs> These people are creating their own influence, their own marketing, their own position, and they're literally becoming publishers, every one of them that are succeeding. But we're going to do it from a connected kind of standpoint, and that you're also beginning to see on Google+. Plus. People who are like-minded and have a cause together or a marketing effort together are joining circles. They're locking arms and promoting each other, and that's exactly what we're going to do, the same kind of thing. I talked about them one be once before with the Wild Bunch being out here, and... This picture here was the only huge mistake that Butch Cassidy made. They were in Fort Worth, Texas and playing, and uh, they went and had a picture taken because they wanted to do a picture together of the gang. But then the Pinkertons got a hold of this picture and found out this is who they were now looking for. And up to that time, they were a little bit undiscovered. And I've thought about with the social media and how this whole thing works, when you take your image and what it is you do and what you want to end up influencing the marketplace with, you're the one in charge with what you put up. And so if you don't begin to build this iconic position for yourself and realize what you're really trying to do is help yourself get into a position where you're you're seen and you're remembered because of your icon. Now, if you can visit with a stranger for a minute and you're just talking to them for just a few minutes and then they walk away, the odds are a thousand percent that they will never remember you. Very shortly you will be forgotten. So the trick is with your iconic relationship is to try and Put something into their life that will help them then remember you from then on. There's a really great glass show going on at the museum, and we were invited over the other night. And it was so fun to bump into this one artist because he knows Jack Solomon really well. 
and I thought it was so interesting and so unusual that he's done work for Jack and then we bump into him at this whole other function but all of a sudden now I've got a new relationship to kind of tie to. Almost never will I walk away that they don't know the story that I was a dentist and I took the dental drill and turned it into a power tool and retired early from dentistry. And Dan said, he's, oh my God, he says, I've met you before. He says, I remember you coming over to my studio and showing me that crazy high speed drill of yours. He says, are you still doing that? <laughs> and I says, yes, we sure are still doing that. But remembering is what you're after now. They can't forget you, but you got to have something that you can tie them with. Something that will help them almost as a natural way to visit with somebody so they know they're not being hustled, they're not being cornered. You're just trying to figure out how in the world can I make this work and have it be something that actually works. And I maintain that is not easy. You have to do it and you have to do it and you have to do it until it begins to actually work. Okay? We can create a lead and create a relationship, but boy, without this follow through, and without this cultivation of the relationship, there generally in our world is not a sale. And we really do try to follow it with a pattern. Um, I used to allow a little more latitude, but I'm getting tired and old. I guess just not got enough patience anymore. But there's certain things here that have proved extremely effective for us, and we do have a 30-year history with it. So. Hopefully, you'll begin to get this figured out and build it in a direction that will actually work for you as well. <clears throat> We're building a new kit just for this program. And then what it will do is allow you to start at a very high position of putting a whole business package together. We've kind of lost track of that this last 10 years, and I want to bring it back. I want to be really strong in the economy because there's more boomers starting small businesses now than ever in history. There's 80 million of us trying to figure out how to retire and if they could start a business and figure out how to pay their bills with the business, they are very interested in that kind of concept. It's about the only way they can solve the gap in their income. And so there's a lot of businesses starting up. Well, if you go look at the business startup world and see what the prices of business kits plus franchises are, it'll stop your heart. They're just expensive packages and you can drop eighty to hundred fifty thousand dollars in starting a small business really fast and yet they're still doing it. And so the idea of starting it from a point of a hobby and we're really the only hobbypreneur entity out there, we really do have an opportunity. Something that's just really fun to talk to people about. The second you discover that they have an interest in somehow they got to find a way to retire. Remember I told you the question, you meet a new person and you say, what do you do for a living? And they'll, uh, they'll give you some kind of an answer. And then the next thing you say is, when can you retire? And the second you follow up with that second question, you'll get the funniest reactions out of people. It's a wide range of action because some are definitely planning and have got a plan and they're getting ready to retire. But there's a whole bunch out there that have not bothered to plan anything. I had a little dental work done last week and I asked my dental buddy again and <laughs> he said, oh God, he said, I'm never going to get to retire. He's not made some bad financial decisions and so I got to I gotta stay with my dental career. And I said, what if you could find another way so you could quit a little early? You got any idea the interest level he has from that kind of comment? Because this one also helpful because he knows that's what I did. And when you can present what you've done, and this is how I did it, and this is how Mel did it, and this is how Ron did it, and this is how Ken did it, and this is how Craig's doing it, you really, we have a pile of ammunition now that should really help you begin to move into the economy with something that actually works. Now I presented these colors and shapes and, and I'm trying to get you to begin to collect 
the images that you most like. And I'm going to post one uh, tonight after the show. I got one that I wanted to put in right here that's very similar to these, these colors. And I want you to start collecting the colors that you prefer. I have used the concept forever that 50% of the economy will like what you do and 50% won't like what you do. But you've got to ferret out what you most like yourself so that you then can fish a little bit more accurately with the same kind of individual. And I forgot to throw this into this show tonight because I'm really, I want you to begin to get a sense of what I'm talking about. So what I'll do is I'll post it right after the show. And then you'll know, reference it right back to this, this gathering of your own collection of preferences. I've talked a lot about it for the last four or five years, but not many of you have actually done it. And it really is significant to help you begin to sense. If I'm going after somebody and I'm going to try and build an inquiry that can then turn into a customer, a lot will be this relationship gathering that you're after. Guy Kawasaki posted a post this morning on how important the five senses are to marketing. And color, visualization of concepts is what's so strong with Google+. But you've got to sense what that is. What are your preferences of color? And begin to build your icon around that same individual idea, okay? I know this is where the market's headed now. The malls are dying. The old way of retailing is being replaced by everything that's going on here. The smartphone statistics of growth and sales is astounding. Absolutely incredible what's going on. And so we're going to give it a try. We're going to go in that direction. I'd like to stick with what I'm doing with having a good time is my job. That's been my little icon and what I've thrown into the wrench for 30 over 30 years because that's what influenced me. And so what I've done is package what has happened to me and that's then what I trade in the economy. You need to come up with your own. If you had a concept and a picture of you here and a concept right here, what would it say? What should it say? What would you most like to define these last few precious few years of your life with? And yeah, I know it's a little challenging to sort that out and figure it out, but it won't be if we keep working on it together. You'll come up with it, I guarantee it. The idea of Success Mountain and our seven mountains throughout my whole book, Opportunity Intersection, is all tied into the mountains, the seven mountains that you have to climb to succeed. And so as you begin to sense that and see what happens with what you're growing here on Google Plus as your icon and your profile, you really have something you can grow successfully and stay with it. Um, I noticed I went and looked at the show. Oh, let's see. I'll wait and do this later. Go back one. I went and looked up how many how many visualizations since the last show of my my wood carving clip. You should be able to type in YouTube. Just type in wood carving, just the words wood carving, and this video will show up first. It's had uh, twenty five thousand views since we talked last. Twenty five flipping thousand views since we last visited. It's got a million two hundred thousand some on now. And if you sense what I have got here and what I did here, I'm gonna try and teach every one of you to have a, some of these little wood coins available. And on the back of them they'll laser put your studio, your own studio name and number and email on the other side of this coin and then this side is blank. But I want you to learn to carve these leaf sets. There's just, I worked on this for years to get to the point where this is like a two minute, three minute demonstration at the most. And then I carve the one and show them how to do the one and then turn them loose with this one. And most can do a pretty decent job by watching me a little bit. And I cannot tell you how many kits I've sold 
with this little silly demonstration. So when you're at a, at a motorcycle show, Jay, and someone has expressed some interest in the equipment, you need to have this all ready to go. Something that is just a slam dunk that allows you to reach into their life and give them a chance to actually touch the drill. People could sit and watch that high-speed tool and they have no clue what they're looking at. They do not realize how far powerful and effective that silly drill really is. So now let's, I, uh, I put all of the Augmandino books up on, uh, up already, and I want to have, uh, let's see, how can I go get it here? I want to do, maybe I can reach it right here. Yeah, right there. And I put the slides all up like I've been doing and read them to you. And uh, when I closed it out today, I erased everything. <laughs> so we're going to go do... We're going to let the guy that's already done it do it for you tonight. Because I think I can find... We're on scrolls... Uh, Skip the ad. I can't. Oh, there it is right there. Mel, can you guys hear that? Nope. You can't hear it? Nope. Sure. A cut of sheep's here, touch with the genius of man, it comes Raymond working. Now we can. Now we hear it. We have leaves and clay and wood. Turn it up to a bit. We have their value multiplied a hundred, a thousand fold by man. Cannot I do this? That's my name. Today I will multiply my value a hundred fold. I am likened to a grain of wheat which faces one of three futures. The wheat can be placed in a sack and dumped in a stall until it is fed to swine, or it can be ground to flour and made into bread, or it can be placed in the earth and allowed to grow until its golden head divides and produces a thousand grains from the one. I am likened to a grain of wheat with one difference. The wheat cannot choose whether it be fed to swine, ground for bread, are planted to multiply. I have a choice, and I will not let my life be fed to swine, nor will I let it be ground under the rocks of failure and despair to be broken open and devoured by the will of others. Today, I will multiply my value a hundredfold. To grow and multiply, it is necessary to plant the wheat grain in the darkness of the earth, and my failures, my despairs, my ignorance, and my inabilities are the darkness in which I have been planted in order to ripen. Now, like the wheat grain which will sprout and blossom only if it is nurtured with rain and sun and warm wind, I too must nurture my body and mind to fulfill my dreams. But to grow to full stature, the wheat must wait on the whims of nature. I need not wait, for I have the power to choose my own destiny. Today I will multiply my value a hundredfold. And how will I accomplish this? First, I will set goals for the day, the week, the month, the year, and my life. Just as the rain must fall before the wheat will crack its shell and sprout, so must I have objectives before my life will crystallize. In setting my goals, I will consider my best performance of the past and multiply it a hundredfold. This will be the standard by which I will live in the future. Never will I be of concern that my goals are too high, for is it not better to aim my spear at the moon and strike only an eagle than to aim my spear at the eagle and strike only a rock? Today I will multiply my value a hundredfold. The height of my goals will not hold me in awe, though I may stumble often before they are reached. If I stumble, I will rise, and my falls will not concern me, for all men must stumble often to reach the heart. 
Oh, the worm is free from the worry of stumbling. I am not a worm. I am not an onion plant. I am not a sheep. I am a man. Let others build a cave with their clay. I will build a castle with mine. Today I will multiply my value a hundredfold. And just as the sun must warm the earth to bring forth the seedling of wheat, so too will the words on these scrolls warm my life and turn my dreams into reality. Today, I will surpass every action which I performed yesterday. I will climb today's mountain to the utmost of my ability. Yet tomorrow I will climb higher than today, and the next will be higher than tomorrow. To surpass the deeds of others is unimportant. To surpass my own deeds is all. Today, I will multiply my value a hundredfold. And just as the warm wind guides the wheat to maturity, the same wind will carry my voice to those who will listen, and my words will announce my goals. Once spoken, I dare not recall them, lest I lose faith. I will be as my own prophet, and though all may laugh at my utterances, they will hear my plans, they will know my dreams, and thus there will be no escape for me until my words become accomplished deeds. Today, I will multiply my value a hundredfold. I will commit not the terrible crime of aiming too low. I will do the work that a failure will not do. I will always let my reach exceed my grasp. I will never be content with my performance in the market. I will always raise my goals as soon as they are attained. I will always strive to make the next hour better than this one. I will always announce my goals to the world. Yet never will I proclaim my accomplishments. Let the world instead approach me with praise, and may I have the wisdom to receive it in humility. Today I will multiply my value a hundredfold. One grain of wheat, when multiplied a hundredfold, will produce a hundred stalks. Multiply these a hundredfold ten times, and they will feed all the cities of the earth. Am I not more than a grain of wheat? Today I will multiply my value a hundredfold. And when it is done, I will do it again and again. And there will be astonishment and wonder at my greatness as the words of these scrolls are fulfilled in me. <laughs> the scroll mark nine. My dreams are worthless. My plans are dust. My goals are impossible. All are of no value unless they are followed by action. I will act now. Never has there been a map, however carefully executed to detail and scale, which carried its owner over even one inch of ground. Never has there been a parchment of law, however fair, which prevented one crime. Never has there been a scroll even such as the one I hold, which earns so much as a penny, or produced a single word of acclamation. Action alone is the tender which ignites the map, the parchment, this scroll, my dream, my plan, my goals into a living force. Action is the food and drink which will nourish my success. I will act now. My procrastination which has held me back was born of fear. And now I recognize this secret mind from the depths of all courageous hearts. Now I know that to conquer fear, I must always act without hesitation, and the flutters in my heart will vanish. Now I know that action reduces the lion of terror to an ant of equanimity. I will act now. Henceforth, I will remember the lesson of the firefly. It gives off its light only when it is on the wing, only when it is in action. I will become a firefly, and even today my glow will be seen in spite of the sun. Let others be as butterflies who preen their wings yet depend on the charity of a flower for life. I will be as the firefly, and my light will brighten the world. I will act now. I will not avoid the tasks of today and charge them to tomorrow, for I know that tomorrow never comes. Let me act now even though my actions may not bring happiness or success. For it is better to act and fail than not to act and flounder. Happiness and truth 
may not be the fruit plucked by my action, yet without action, all fruit will die on the vine. I will act now. I will act now. I will act now. I will act now. Henceforth, I will repeat these words again and again and again, each hour, each day, every day, until the words become as much a habit as my breathing, and the actions which follow become as instinctive as the blinking of my eyelids. With these words, I can condition my mind to perform every act necessary for my success. With these words, I can condition my mind to meet every challenge which the failure avoids. I will act now. I will repeat these words again and again and again. When I awake, I will say them and leap from my cot while the failure sleeps yet another hour. I will act now. When I enter the marketplace, I will say them and immediately confront my first prospect while the failure ponders yet his possibility of rebuff. I will act now. When I face a closed door, I will say them and knock while the failure waits outside with fear and trepidation. I will act now. When I face temptation, I will say them and immediately act to remove myself from evil. I will act now. When I am tempted to quit and begin again tomorrow, I will say them and immediately act to consummate another sale. I will act now. Only action determines my value in the marketplace and to multiply my value, I will multiply my actions. I will walk where the failure fears to walk and I will work when the failure seeks rest. I will talk when the failure remains silent. I will call on 10 who can buy my goods while the failure makes grand plans to call on one. I will say it is done before the failure says it is too late. I will act now, for now is all I have. Tomorrow is the day reserved for the labor of the lazy. I am not lazy. Tomorrow is the day when the evil becomes good. I am not evil. Tomorrow is the day when the weak become strong. I am not weak. Tomorrow is the day when the failure will succeed. I am not a failure. I will act now. When the lion is hungry, he eats. When the eagle has thirst, he drinks. Lest they act, both will perish. I hunger for success. I thirst for happiness and peace of mind. Lest I act, I will perish in a life of failure, misery, and sleepless nights. I will command, and I will obey mine own command. I will act now. Success will not wait. If I delay, she will become betrothed to another and lost to me forever. This is the time. This is the place. I am the man. I will act now. Every time I go back through Augmandino stuff, it just freaks me out because it's the kind of thing I don't, I just didn't realize at the time what was actually going on and how helpful it was for me to get through that really really challenging period of time and we really do have something that the world needs so badly it's an alternative way of getting a business going and producing some extra income in a way that's satisfying and enjoyable and something that we can, can all actually learn to do and there's very few things out there that are like this. The first rule I'm trying to help you learn is that which you cannot measure, you cannot manage. And so we're going to try and build a database underneath you of lost your sound, Doc.
Mel, did you mute him? No, he did that all by himself. He did it all by himself. I kind of wonder if he got bumped out. No, he's still on, I think. His, look at his square over there. Yeah. But it's froze up. Yeah, it's just not transmitting. Let's see if he sees the message. I doubt it, though. Oh, there it went. He did get bumped out. Yeah. Let's see if he gets we'll back in. Can... Yeah. That could be the problem. I just talked to him. Mark and? Oh, gee, it's by Apple. Did you he talk did to him? What did he say? You're a he's traitor, gonna, Mel. He's going to be You're back in there. What did he say, Mel? <laughs> he's going to come back in. All right. You're kind of hang loose. He'll work on it. Get back in. No, I like my uh, iPhone. It's nice and small and compact. And it's a great excuse not to text my grandkids because my fingers are too fat. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm, I'm a... learning to use the wand, and that's been great. No, I don't think that's an excuse. It does have voice texting <laughs> capabilities. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's one that they get anyways. <laughs> I'll tell you, if Apple brings the 3D touch like they have on the iPad Pro to the iPhone, that's going to revolutionize the phone tremendously. Because with the pressure, I don't know if anybody watched the the Apple event, but uh, with that pencil that they have for the the iPad Pro 6, as you put more pressure down on, you can widen the stroke and lighten up. It'll narrow it, so you can do some fantastic artwork, just like brushwork on on the iPad Pro. That's been around for a long time on some of the tablets available for doing the artwork. Now, basically, they brought that uh, uh, Wacom. Yeah, to the to the to their own tablet. Yeah, but that's what it reminded me of as soon as I saw it on the event. Yeah, so much of the stuff that they claim is new has been around so long, it just got lost, and somebody's discovered it again. It's being recycled. Yep. Yeah. I think the, the bell bottom the, pants and the '57 Chevy and the sensors and stuff that they have in in that underneath the screen is what you know makes theirs a little bit different, or so it says. You know, yeah. does it a different way than than the the others done uh, done by software, where this is done by the by the pressure. Somebody's making a new '57 Chevy. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yeah, <laughs> Down in Cuba, yeah. A program called Cuban Chrome. I, I want a 57 Thunderbird. Sorry, guys. Uh, Thunderbird. I, I, they probably got them new in Cuba. Yeah, Cuban Chrome. <laughs> That's cute. But, uh, Tamara, did you see the uh, email I sent you on your go Gmail? No, I didn't get to see it. I was... I was um, I, I saw that you'd sent it, but I haven't seen it yet. Okay. Is that your new bracelet? Yeah. Well, since everybody's here and they can see. Oh, good. Let's see. This is everything that was on it. And that is actual size. This wow, is an eight, okay. eight and a half by 11. The bracelet is one inch wide. Seven inches long. That's front and back. I can't believe you got all that on, Mel. 
Hey, I got a microscope right there that does a wonderful job. I know. <laughs> there it is. What's the triple triangles for, Mel? That's the uh, it's a Nordic sign of the Volknot. I guess it's like the uh, Trilesk or whatever. It's an ancient design. Like kind of like the 